Hello, everybody. My name is Pablo Wojcicki. I'm a faculty member at Northwestern University and director of the Center for Latinx Digital Media. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for today's weekly seminar of the Center. It's really a pleasure to have you with us. The mission of the Center is to create knowledge about digital media in Latinx and Latin American communities across the Americas. Today's speaker is a leading scholar in this space. Victor Garcia Perdomo is an associate professor in the School of Communication at the Universidad de La Sabana in Bogota, Colombia, where he works as the director of the master program in digital journalism and communication. Mariana Sanchez Santos, a doctoral student at American University and an affiliate at the Center for Latinx Digital Media, will introduce Victor in just a minute. I'm delighted to note that today's talk is co-sponsored by the Alice Kaplan Institute for the Humanities, the Buffett Institute for Global Affairs, the Center for Global Culture and Communication, and the Latin American and Caribbean Studies Program. But before we go to the seminar, I would like to start by acknowledging that Northwestern is a community of learners situated within a network of historical and contemporary relationships with Native American tribes, communities, parents, students, and alumni. It is also in close proximity to an urban Native American community in Chicago and near several tribes in the Midwest. The Northwestern campus sits on the traditional homelands of the people of the Council of the Three Fires, the Jewe, Potawatomi, and Odawa, as well as the Menominee, Miami, and Ho Chunk nations. It was also a site of trade, travel, gathering, and healing for more than a dozen other Native tribes and is still home to over 100,000 tribal members in the state of Illinois. It is within Northwestern's responsibility as an academic institution to disseminate knowledge about native peoples and institutions history with them. Consistent with the university's commitment to diversity and inclusion, Northwestern works towards building relationships with Native American communities through academic pursuits, partnerships, historical recognitions, community service and enrollment efforts. Let me say briefly about how the seminar will unfold. First, Mariana will tell us more about Victor's research and career in just a minute. Then Victor will deliver his seminar. After that, we will open for questions. Please enter your questions in the Q&A function of the webinar. Mariana will read them aloud and will moderate. At the end, we will deliver some closing remarks. Once again, many, many thanks for joining us. And without further ado, Mariana, the screen is all yours. Thank you, Professor Pablo, and thank you very much um, to the Center for this invitation. I'm going to present Professor Victor Garcia Perdomo. Uh, professor Victor Garcia Perdomo is Associate Professor in the School of Communication at the University of La Sabana in Bogota, Colombia. He received his PhD in journalism and his MA in Latin American Studies from the University of Texas at Austin. He is Fulbright Fellow Garcia Perdomo's research addresses the impact of digital technology on mass media and journalism. He is also director of the Master Program of Digital Journalism and Communication, former head of the journalism department. His work has been published in prestigious journals such as Digital Journalism, Journalism of Communication, Journalism, Journalism Studies, Mass Communication, and others. Professor Garcia Perdomo is a journalist with 14 years of experience and solid knowledge in Latin American media, history, and economy. Recently, he published in Digital Journalism the article Redigitizing Television News, the relationship between TV, online media, and audiences. The conversation today is titled Understanding the Data Journalism in Latin America between Open Coding Culture, Transparency, and Inve Investigative Reporting and will address how Latin American journalists understand data journalism according to their context and how technical artifacts shape their journalistic values and practices. Welcome, Professor Garcia Perdón. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for that wonderful introduction. Thank you to the center, um, Pablo, for giving me the opportunity to present my research in this important seminar uh, series. Um, it is, of course, an honor to be here with you all. Um, let me just start in sharing the presentation. Just a second. Okay. 
I don't know if you can see my presentation. Yes, perfectly okay. well. Okay, thank you. So uh, my presentation is about understanding data driven in that right? My colleague, Marisabel Magaña and I have been conducting this research uh, for um, like around a year. Um, but let me start by introducing the topic and providing um, some context. Uh, data journalism has emerged as an important branch of the communication field. Great amounts of digital data produced by users and organizations are facilitating processing of information for journalists and scholars alike. Collecting, analyzing, and visualizing data provides support and authority to the end times of economic and professional crisis. So data journalism somehow has contributed to the evolution and development of journalism in aspects uh, such as precision, central tendency, accuracy, and trust from the audience. The study of data journalism uh, has also increased, particularly in North America and Europe. However, this phenomenon remains relatively unexplored in the Latin American context. One of the reasons why Latin America is a little behind researching and implementing this practice is due to challenges that journalism has to face in the region for a long time. For instance, while precision journalism was very well established in the United States during the 70s, Latin American nations were struggling for freedom of information as many countries were ruled by military dictatorships. And when the region was finally moving towards democracy at the end of the 1980s, a series of economic crises prevented the implementation of computational technologies that were very, very popular in the global norm newsrooms. So um, data journalism has also has its own evolution. Some authors believe that it's a development of precision journalism, a concept that links the application of social science research methods to journalistic practice. Other scholars like Gordon argue that data journalism is tied to computer assistant reporting, which use technology and data analysis in newsrooms. Uh, Collington, however, argues that data journalism is different from precision and computer assisted journalism because it, it emerged from the intersection uh, between professional journalism and open source culture. In fact, data journalists merge computational analysis and open access mindset to technology and information and the traditional storytelling practices. To understand this uh, complex phenomena, um, this research takes a socio-technical approach, particularly to social construction of technology, is caught, uh, to explain what is happening with data journalism in Latin America using a combination of journalism studies and technological studies. The main argument of Scott is that there is a mutual shaping between technology and society to social practices. Some of the main questions that Scott are uh, trying to answer is how people and machines work together, how communities shape technologies, and how technological designs shape societies. More importantly for this research is how technology and artifacts shapes professional practice and organizations. So Scott somehow has developed a key question, a key, a key concepts to understand the adoption of technologies in societies. The first one is interpretative flexibility of artifacts and tools, which states that different groups use technical artifacts and innovation in different ways, depending on their social context. The other key concept uh, from Scott is technological frames. It refers to the meaning that groups give to certain technologies. Um, technological frames have the capability of promoting certain actions and discouraging others within communities. Uh, these frames usually contain ideas that make sense uh, of technology for certain groups. So these concepts, uh, I believe that these concepts can be can be applied to data journalism units and online newsrooms. So it's called is particularly useful for investigating online newsroom because it's more flexible than other technological theories uh, and allows researchers to identify elements that interact in the process of implementation of new tools. 
with that theoretical framework, uh, we ask uh, the following question. So the first one is how do Latin American reporters define data journalists according to the context? How data journalists and units uh, working with different media in Latin America adopt and make sense of digital technologies to do their work? And the third question is how are digital platforms and technical artifacts, meaning tools, data, and software, uh, are shaping journalistic values and practices of data journalism in Latin America. As a methodology, uh, we use in-depth interviews to explore data journalism from the participant's point of view and to understand the construction of social experience of these practitioners. Once the interviews were transcribed electronically, those documents were carefully reviewed and examined several times until patterns emerged from the data. As a sample, we selected uh, four traditional media, six digital native media data units in Latin America that um, basically were nominated, uh, nominated for major journalistic awards. Um, here, um, let me show you uh, very quickly a list of these uh, media participants, La Nación from Argentina, Rutas del Conflicto from Colombia, Ojo Público in Peru, La Nación from Costa Rica, Post Data Club from Cuba, Proyecto Poder in Mexico, Run Run from Venezuela, El Universal from Mexico, Oja de Sao Paulo and Brazil, y Abadi también, also from Brazil. So, Results, uh, basically, after doing this uh, interview with these traditional media outlets and the uh, native media outlets, um, the results show that uh, reporters understand data journalists as a hybrid between investigative journalism, freedom of information, and open source culture. So data journalism is defined as a natural evolution of journalism through technology, but this approach is made with an open source and computational mindset. So data journalism uh, is fundamental for working on investigative reporting for these uh, units, uh, particularly for fighting corruption or analyzing complex issues in the context of land. Um, also, we found that data units are very small, multidisciplinary, self-taught journalism with very few resources. As an example of the uh, importance of the relationship between data journalism and investigative reporting, Eduard Martín Borregón from Proyecto Poder uh, from Mexico explains, so let me read that. Um, data journalism in Latin America is deeply rooted in investigative reporting, which differs from what is done in the United States or in Europe, where data journalism looks more like infographic or stereotypes. Another important uh, finding, um, the second key finding uh, uh, of this investigation is that data journalism have, uh, have similar beliefs held by coders in the sense that they make particular emphasis on data transparency, free access to information, upfront methodology on how they work with numbers and open sources tools. Similarly, data units prefer to develop their own tools, their own coding uh, using open libraries, but lack of resources can block these particular practices. Journalists uh, also aims to control digital platforms, applications, and data. There is always a concern among these units about using private and free platforms. Um, so these data Data things uh, basically prefer implementing open source tools, tools that they can control as a way to ensure uh, some independence, security, and transparency when they are reporting. Sometimes they might have to settle for free private tools because of lack of resources or abilities, but they know that they're giving up part of the agency when they're using these free tools. So as an example of the power of these tools and how uh, these units uh, perceive uh, technology, we have these um, quotes, one from 
Judy Dian Almeida from Post Data Club. Uh, she said, when a tool or platform is already made, it limits our freedom. So we create our own tools using open code to tell the story the way we want. It makes the process harder, but at least it makes you technologically free. And then Martin Borregón from Proyecto Poder Mexico says, any given day, online free tools might change their policies, sell their company to a third party, or just choose uh, or just close, and, and we lose everything. It happened before. Our findings also show that uh, transparency is a key journalistic value. Data journalists value transparency over other traditional journalistic norms, and that tendency privilege transparency um, over any other or any other thing that, that they do in the, in the newsrooms. So this this kind of um, this kind of tendency to privilege transparency creates some sort of activism towards open data access and freedom of information. For instance, um, Gustavo Arias from La Nación Costa Rica, uh, he said, we often have to go to court and find for our freedom of information requests to obtain public data. And once you succeed at getting the data, uh, the next challenge is fighting to get the documents in open formats. I don't know whether there is a conscious government practice of denying access to information, but open data culture is not established. One of the main problems that we found um, for data journalists in the region is access to reliable data. So data journalist units in Latin America are implementing disrupt, disrupting uh, data collection practices uh, to face difficulties related to access to public records. Um, one of the main challenge is the lack of culture around that data creation and access. Uh, interview says that several public and private entities don't process information uh, correctly, uh, hindering somehow uh, how journalists' ability to obtain accurate data to tell their stories. As a solution, journalists says that um, they have to build their own data sets from scratch, something that is really difficult for them, but they rather do that that access, you know, uh, data that is not, it's not really data that, that, that are not reliable. Uh, some participants claim access to public data is restricted intentionally. Um, politics, uh, for the interview that we did, uh, in politics seems to be one of the main factors that block free access to that. Changes in government also seems to affect the information available, and data units are becoming somehow activists for information access. Um, for instance, um, Oscar Parra and Martin Borregón said, Oscar Parra said, uh, Oscar Parra from Rutas del Conflicto here in Colombia said, Rutas is creating its own data set about massacres in Colombia using data from scholars, NGOs, social leaders, and communities because we don't trust government data. And Martin Borregón from Proyecto Poder Mexico said, we used to have access to the specific data sets regarding the state contracts, but it is no longer available with the new government. So changes in government, uh, changes in government and trust in data are some important as aspects for these um, journalists. Um, another uh, important finding is that collaboration is kind of the platform of journalism innovation. Although small data journalist units in Latin America are made of reporters, technologies, and designers, uh, data journalists seems to be a common ground where multiple actors who come together to establish, to establish new professional arrangements and boundaries to produce stories with data. So without this um, collaboration, participants says neither journalists nor technologies alone who tell significant data stories and develop the full potential of the big data sets. So for them, it's, it's very important, this collaboration, um, 
between different professions and among journalists in the region. In the Latin American context, uh, the relationship between journalists, technologists, and designers seems to be very beneficial to all the parts involved. Regional, regional collaboration seems to be also very important, and historical factors uh, facilitate this exchange between journalists. Um, for instance, common Latin roots of the language, religion, and cultural Hispanic origins are factors that maintain regional, regional identification. Also, Latin American countries share similar problems like deep social inequalities, weak political institutions of laws, human rights violations, corruption, violence, and social protests. So sharing these, um, sharing these common aspects in Latin America, and at the same time, sharing similar problems seems to be um, something that uh, helps collaboration between humans. It's not only about collaboration between different professions within the field of journalism, but it, it is also the possibility that journalists find themselves in a position in which they can collaborate regionally. So finally, let's move on to the discussion section. So uh, Latin American journalists, um, or Latin American data journalists are opening the boundaries of their field to new actors um, because of difficulties that they have from the technological point of view or difficulties that they have from the, the designing point of view. And uh, in these interactions of opening the boundaries to other actors in, in different fields, they are creating a regional activism for open active access and transparency with data. Um, the combination of different disciplines seems to be um, very helpful to amplify the boundaries of journalism as new actors begin to be part of the journalistic field and data units um, who are working with very small teams uh, with very few resources. They prefer open source coding, even though it's kind of difficult to produce them. And they prefer open technologies and produces to produce stories because they believe that um, producing their own technology, so producing their own coding um, helps them to remain uh, independence um, and help them to uh, somehow have some agency. Collaboration, as I said, um, uh, cross borders um, and support among different sectors of society seems to be cross crucial for the development of data journalism in the region since it facilitates innovation and facilitates that different units work uh, with the same problems in investigative journalism. Collaboration so is key to overcoming data access obstacles. Um, data, journalist, uh, data journalists in general in Latin America promote and participate in regional events that are reporters, scholars, and public and private sector leaders to come up with ideas and projects that somehow strengthen access to data and facilitate innovation. So there is a conscious, um, there is a conscious effort uh, for, uh, for, uh, for data journalists to promote and participate in regional events uh, that involves uh, uh, many different people from, from universities to public and private uh, sectors. And, um, and finally, uh, the impact of technology. Um, the affordances of, of digital technologies seems to be also crucial for these um, practitioners uh, that uh, work with data journalist uh, units in Latin America. Um, because um, doing, doing the analysis, we can see that um, these tools are changing or, or the, the way the journalists approach these tools is somehow changing journalistic values and practices in three main ways. The first one is that um, given the difficulties that, uh, that some digital designs 
on our programming imposed in the profession, there is a multidisciplinary configuration of data units. So the journalists try to uh, bring uh, engineers, uh, try to bring uh, designers and the people from, from the technological uh, professions in order to complement the difficulties that they face when trying to program or design for the web. Then the second aspect is that um, there is a sort of disruptive data collection practices um, that are constantly created as a reaction to the difficulties to access uh, to data in the regional context. So journalists basically are constantly um, fighting against um, the restrictions that they, act, they, they, that they face when accessing, accessing data uh, in the region. And finally, there is an increasing activism around technology, data access, and transparency that is very important uh, for the development of the, of the profession uh, towards the future. Um, so basically, um, that's, that's uh, uh, my presentation. And uh, I would like to thank you, the Latin Digital Media Center for giving me the opportunity to present uh, my research. And of course, I am open uh, for questions or for comments regarding these, um, these investigations. Thank you very much, uh, Pablo, and thank you to the center for this opportunity. Okay, so we are going to open for Q&A questions. Um, if anybody have any questions, we have, well, you have here the link. And I have, I have some questions, Professor. Uh, thank you so much for this very interesting presentation. It, I think it is such a very um, important work of, of understanding how technology definitely shapes the way we are communicating and understanding different um, social problems. I have some questions of what you were mentioning um, in, in the last bit. You, you said that, for example, uh, one of in the discussion, the multidisciplinary configuration of, of data units. Could you provide some examples of this multidisciplinary perspective, like on which specific cases we have this combination of engineers and journalists? And a second question uh, is activism around data access and transparency. This activism is carried out basically by journalists or it's also part of social, social uh, well, civil society, sorry. Okay, so um, the specific cases, for instance, in La Nación, in Argentina, we have um, a little bit more resources. Um, they, they have bring you know, people or professionals from, um, from in engineers, and they have designers, and they have this um, um, idea that uh, journalists alone cannot do this work, that they have to bring people who really know how to program, uh, who really know how to um, code. Um, and, and even though they're, they're learning how to do it themselves in the sense that some of them um, uh, take uh, courses, uh, online courses, or go to the United States or to Europe to get some training about how to handle these technologies. They recognize, certainly, most of them, that they need the help of uh, different other, other fields, uh, different fields in order to accomplish their work the way they want. Uh, so um, most, in most of the cases, um, for instance, uh, here also in Colombia, um, Rutas del Conflicto, uh, the leader of this project, Oscar Parra, he is an engineer himself uh, who got trained as a journalist in, in, the, in a Colombian university and who's constantly uh, getting training from, from the US and from Europe in order to, to get these skills. But uh, even though he's able to uh, produce some of the things that he's done uh, so far uh, regarding violence in Colombia, um, he is conscious of the fact that he needs people from all the fields, particularly the scientists and engineers, to accomplish his work. And then um, the second question, uh, can you 
the people so that we have this accomplished. If activism is carried out uh, mainly by journalists? Well, yeah, that's, that's actually a good question. It depends. Um, uh, for instance, um, in most of the cases, journalists themselves uh, take the lead and, and try to um, um, accomplish these goals uh, without the help. Uh, I mean, getting ahead of the, of, the, of the society. But the relationship between, uh, particularly in the case of uh, native uh, digital media, the relationship between digital and native media and, and different civil organizations is very strong. Um, so we can see that when the, the, when the media outlets are kind of small, um, they tend to be closer uh, to communities, be closer to a specific house. And uh, and this um, and the and, and the fact that they are very close to community uh, make them somehow um, um, they ask basically the civil the society to get involved in these projects and many organizations are participating in these projects uh, as I said because one of the difficulties uh, in Peru and in Colombia and Mexico is uh, getting access to uh, public data or government data. Uh, what the, these organizations are doing is building their own data sets from scratch. And because they are building their data sets from scratch, what they're doing is using communities as a source of information to create these data sets. Um, and this is very important because uh, communities um, uh, or causes in, in, in Latin America um, start to have some resonance uh, within this media because they are act, an active part of building these data sets. Thank you. We have a question from Professor Jairo Lugo. A great presentation, many thanks. My question is, how sustainable do you think data journalism is in Latin America in the long run? Well, that's, that's actually a good question. I, I probably don't have the answer. Um, what, I, what I can see is that, of course, because the amount of data is growing, because accessing to accurate data, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a problem in Latin America. It's a constant problem everywhere in which you, you cannot find reliable data sets. Um, I believe that it's something that is going to continue. The thing is that uh, these units are really small um, because they are really small, even in the context of traditional media, they are very vulnerable. Uh, so this is sometimes the idea of you know, two people, three people working uh, together in a native digital media or probably very small units inside large corporations or large media. Uh, so that's why it seems to me that they are very vulnerable. Now, the power of uh, data, data, the power of using data correctly, um, seems to be um, something that is going to continue in the future, right? So using correctly data is going to be something that it will be important for, for telling stories, for organizations. We, we can see that all kinds of organizations are trying to use data in order to take decisions. And, uh, and I believe that um, this is something that will continue to grow. Uh, we don't know until what point automatic uh, journalism or automatization is going to um, do that job in the near future of, um, and, uh, and not use uh, journalists or, or journalistic units uh, for the purpose of producing information with data. But right now we can see that data is growing. Um, it, it is becoming more and more important uh, for taking decisions. And, uh, and these uh, units are producing incredible work uh, that, um, that um, somehow uh, this work is generating a huge impact on society. So I believe that because of the impact and because of the fact that data is continuing 
I continue uh, to grow, um, uh, that I, beta journals is something that is going to be um, uh, consolidated probably in the near future. Thank you. We have another question coming from Daniel Trielli. Very interesting talk. Thank you very much. I was wondering if you could talk a bit more about the role of influence that American technologies and practices in Latin America data journalism. In the beginning, you pointed to some distinction that LATAM journalists make of data journalism in the continent versus in the United States. But it seems that a lot of this work is inspired and shaped by what is done in the US. Could you talk more about this? Definitely. Um, you, I mean, that's a, that's a great point. Uh, the thing is that most of the, most of the practices and the tools uh, that these journalists uh, are using um, and, and some technologies um, come from, from the global north, from, from the US, right? Um, but then when they, when they are using these technologies, um, they're trying to do something different with technologies in the sense that it's not, it's not just about um, reading or understanding story through data that somebody provides. It's, it's more about activism and it's more about investigative reporting. So even though some of the practice are very, some of the practices and the tools seems to be, um, seems to be uh, very similar uh, to tell you the truth once they take these tools or they create the code uh, for, for working with the data, um, they try to do something different, right? They try to do something different. It's not just about visualizing. It's not about just taking data and visualizing it uh, for the purpose of understanding the impact or you know, something. Um, they try to do something different and they have this um, activism uh, about data openness. And they believe that their work is important, not in the process of creating a story with data and creating a story visualizing this data, but also creating the data itself because it's in the creation of the data where the investigative reporting um, uh, has his, his fundamental aspect regarding journalism. So, even though uh, we can say that some of the practices and tools are the same, are very similar, we can see a sort of activism in Latin America that is a little bit different from the perspective uh, of, of North America. I don't know if I answer the question to tell you, it's a, it's a very difficult question. But, but uh, just to complement, they, they said that uh, so, some of the interviewees said that, um, that, uh, that they, they don't have the same approach because they don't have these uh, technological resources. Um, they don't have all the, the easy way to access data. So they, they, it seems like uh, for them, it's, it's, it's more a matter of, of, of the compromise that they have with the, the creation of the right data sets uh, that is really important from the journalistic perspective. Thank you. Daniel is saying, yes, you did. Thank you. <laughs> we have another question for, from Kirsi Mari. Yes, I'm so sorry if I'm spelling this um, wrong. Thank you so much for your fascinating presentation. Hello from Finland. I would love to hear more about your thoughts, re-collaborative data investigative journalism, especially across region. For example, how do you, how and to what extent, 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 sorry, is technology allowing Latin America data investigative journalists to collaborate with journalists in other regions, for example, North America? How could such international collaborations enabled by tech shape Latin America data journalism um, and in investigative reporting? Okay, uh, yeah, I think, I think that the collaboration is more, um, it's less towards technology than uh, towards participating in events in which they can share 
their problems to see how they solve problems uh, regarding access to data and how, how they solve problems uh, regarding access to tools and resources, right? Um, the relationship, uh, it's, it's strong because they have, as I said, they have some conference, that the, some regional conference they are participating actively. And, uh, and, and some, sometimes they work together in problems across the border, right? Um, and we, we can see some examples, um, um, particularly you know, between uh, uh, Colombia and Venezuela uh, regarding immigration. Uh, we can see some, um, some collaboration between um, uh, Mexico and Colombia regarding corruption. Um, and so on. Um, but the thing is that there is not actually, uh, if I understood correctly the question, there is not actually a technological network, right? And it's not a technology is, uh, is there to facilitate these exchanges. I believe it's more about, uh, as I said, it's more about activism, um, participating in events that somehow uh, uh, help them to understand the problem that they have as a region and how then how in the in a specific context they are approaching these problems to solve them. I don't see the, the collaboration that uh, between the, the US and, and these um, that data units in, in Latin America. What I can see is that they constantly apply to funding, you know, funding in Europe and in, in the US is something that they uh, they do constantly. You know, they, they apply to open societies foundation, they apply to four foundation in order to um, get some resources from from the US and from Europe to produce re uh, reliable and important uh, data data uh, journalism here in Latin America. So the, the relationship more than technological and exchange of of, of information between the US and Latin America is more about getting resources from the global part. Very interesting. Thank you. We have another question from Pablo Morales. He says, um, hi, Pablo Morales from the University of Leeds here. I was wondering whether there are any initiatives between journalists working for media organizations and journalism schools as well. Are journalism schools providing any training in this respect? Thank you. Well, that's a, that's a great question. Actually, uh, we have not investigated that. Um, so I, I, I don't have um, information about exchanges between data journalism and universities. Um, some examples that I know that are really close to me, uh, for instance, Rutas del Conflicto, uh, from Colombia is working directly with a university, right? So it's a professor from a university in Colombia and uh, Rutas del Conflicto is somehow embedded inside the university. It's like a, an innovation project that is inside the university. And even though the director of this project uh, is an independent journalist because of the fact that he's a professor, sometimes he's, um, using students because he's teaching that the journalists, the journalists from this school, uh, using his students to not only to, to teach something in the, the curriculum, but also um, to actually produce a sort of a lab in which students help them, help, help the recruiters at that to produce stories and tell stories with that data. So I guess um, it's, it's, it's a good mix it's a good mix between universities and the small data, uh, data units in Latin America, and I think it will work. In the case of uh, Rupa del Conflicto is working, um, but I'm not. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if this is something that is uh, happening across um, different uh, nations and countries here in Latin America. I, I don't, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure. Maybe it's a good idea for dissertation projects. <laughs> <laughs> We have another question from Mora Matasi. Uh, thank you, Mariana, and thank you, Professor Victor, for this really insightful presentation. 
I think my question um, is a little bit associated with um, the previous question that, I, that was asked about the education um, of data journalism. I wonder whether uh, you captured in your data any clear generational gaps in relation to the approach to data journalism. That is, do you think that journalists themselves perceive that um, this is a matter really associated with their generation? Like, because I'm thinking, for instance, in the distinction, uh, of course, very non so useful distinction right now, right? But between uh, digital natives and digital immigrants, uh, the idea that the younger the generations are, the more engaged they are with uh, new technologies and with uh, um, coding capabilities so um, or skills. So I'm wondering whether you capture any of that in your data. I mean, is it correlated with the younger journalists are, the more welcome they're going to be into these particular practices or not? Thank you so much. Yeah, I, I can see the efforts of traditional journalists who have been working as a journalist for a long time. And they are taking the lead, some of them are taking the lead, and they are getting trained about how to produce and work with data journals. But then, um, after saying that, um, they are constantly training very young journalists to do this work. So, so what we found is that not only they are getting training constantly using um, uh, internet courses or online courses um, and uh, sometimes traveling for a short time to the US and to Europe to train themselves as a journalist, but they're also replicate, replicating this, uh, this knowledge um, and training very young age journalists uh, who are just at the beginning of their careers, right? So it's, it's, not only the, it's not only that universities are incorporating these, um, these abilities, these technological abilities in their curriculum, but also that uh, journalists uh, who are leading these projects and are learning how to do these projects uh, with open coding and scrapping, uh, scraping the data from, from the web, they're taking this knowledge that they have for this training in the US or in Europe and teaching uh, this uh, or, or transferring this knowledge to very young journalists. Uh, this is the case um, in, in Argentina, this is the case in, in Venezuela, and this is the case in Colombia. So they are, uh, they are uh, very well known journalists, uh, established journalists who learn how to work with data. Uh, who bring people from different fields and then they transfer that knowledge to very young journalists. So there is a kind of growing number of journalists uh, who are getting trained to uh, work with data uh, directly uh, into this uh, unit. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. No, thank you. We have another question from Facundo. Hi, Victor. Thank you very much for uh, this wonderful presentation. And I have a question maybe related to Amora's question also. And I, I was wondering if you, um, if you uh, saw evidence in your project and while doing the interviews of the impact of technologies and the changes in the journalistic, journalistic values uh, in the content that is communicated to the audience so in other words, uh, if the form of news has changed due to this innovation, and if so, um, how was it received by other journalism or by the newsroom? And if there is like an impact in how they are approaching new audiences and, and related to this, uh, if there is evidence also of inter-collaboration within the newsroom due to uh, this innovation. Thank you very much. Well, that, that's a very good question. Um, it goes directly to my methods. Um, I didn't want to talk about it because it's obviously a limitation of my work. Um, when, you, um, when you use um, in-depth interviews um, as, a, as a methodological tool uh, to answer important questions about technologies, uh, there is always a limitation. You're, um, you're kind of um, 
understanding from the point of view of the participants, how they perceive those tools, how they implement those tools, and how they make sense of technology from their practices and from their what we call technological frames, the ideas that they have about technology. Uh, but one of the limitations, and, 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 I, and I believe I, and, uh, Marisa Bell and I have to fix this, is that um, it doesn't allow us to actually see what kind of tools they use to produce content, right? So, so one important um, step that we have to take at this point with this research is we need to take a look, a careful look at, you know, these, uh, Data, data, multimedia content that they produce in order to understand how they apply tools uh, to the to the to the process of producing this content, right? Um, so that's that's actually a, a limitation. Uh, that's regarding the first question, and, and I, I do you're absolutely right because we couldn't do observation, which was a perfect complement for uh, in-depth interviews. If we would have the ability to, to observe what, what is going on in these uh, units, it will be much easier to understand specifically how they implement tools and how they use the tools to produce uh, this kind of content. But because we don't have that, well, we, we, we have to go, so uh, we have to take a closer look of what they produce and understand uh, from, the, from the end, from the, from the content, how they use these tools to produce this, 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 kind, of, this kind of stories. Um, regarding the second question, we have uh, some evidence of collaboration inside units. Uh, as I said, units are really small, and sometimes in big corporations like La Nación from Argentina, uh, these units work in collaboration with other investigative report, reporters from different sections, right? For instance, uh, if if they, if if uh, the crime, uh, the, the people who cover crime, um, if people who cover crime, uh, the the journalists have a big story about I don't know drug dealers or something like that or or corruption, and uh, so they always think about the the possibility of integrating the data units inside their investigation. So data units in, in big corporations work as a sort of a flexible team that can work with any other section inside media. So we, we can see actually that collaboration and, and for, for many traditional journalists who are inside big corporations, the data units are becoming more and more important for the production of uh, investigative report. So they, when, when they think about something that is related to investigative reporting, they always think about bringing the, the data units in order to produce something that is uh, you know, much better, much better in the sense that we can uh, show tendencies or show, um, show with data, data that something um, really important is going on behind this problem. Thank you, Victor. No, thank you for your question. We have one last question from Professor Pablo. Thank you very much, Mariana. Thank you, Victor, for a great presentation. As, as the organizer, I get the privilege of asking the last question, uh, unless you know there is a question from the audience following up on that. Um, so I want actually to go to the first question. Uh, I believe Daniel asked the, the first question. Um, but I want to take a different framing uh, of that instead of technological framing, the sort of historical and political framing. So it strikes me. So I was thinking, okay, wh why is there a difference uh, in the articulation uh, of data journalism in Latin America versus what happens in the US and Europe? And in particular, why the focus uh, on investigative journalism and uh, the centrality of controlling the tools and the Primacy of transparency, etc. And I and I was thinking that perhaps is an outgrowth of 
you know, the dictatorships in the region during the 20th century, in particular the wave in the 70s um, that really shaped a lot of the culture of the newsrooms. And uh, in, uh, you know, the transition to democracy in many parts of uh, the region, we saw you know, significant levels of corruption and therefore opacity, both in government and in private sectors in, in dealing with that. We are still seeing that today. Some cases are you know, within national boundaries, some other cases like Lava Jato are, or Lava Jato are you know, uh, cutting across boundaries. So I, I wonder whether in, in your interviews or in other parts of your research, you saw evidence of that, that you know, the connection with investigative journalism and issues of control over the technology and transparency of information access were tied uh, together as a reaction to uh, the histories, uh, political and uh, cultural, um, the, the region, sorry, political and cultural history. I think I, 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 I am completely, um, I completely agree with you. I think there, there is a strong relation, strong historical relationship between uh, dictatorships in, in, in Latin America and the way journalists are approaching uh, data units or the, the conceptualization that they have about data and, and how to produce these stories with open coding and access to information. But the thing is that memory somehow is, is like too short. Um, we can see that during the 80s, uh, because of the economic crisis, uh, some authors have recognized that um, some of the limitations that the press uh, had in the past during the dictatorship continue in a different form uh, using, you know, the economic crisis as an excuse, but some of the, some of the limitations that the press had uh, during the dictatorship continued during the 80s and during the 90s, right? So even though those forces are there and somehow for the scholars are probably evident, for journalists, they don't, they don't see that. They, what they see is that they don't trust their government. They don't trust the data that governments are producing. So because they don't trust that data and that they know, for instance, in Mexico, when they change uh, governments from the right to the left, um, they, they can see that, um, that because of the change of government, everything is going to be lost or access to data is going to change. Um, so they don't trust uh, governments and, and they try to build everything from scratch. That's what they, they're trying to do. They're trying to build everything from scratch because they don't trust uh, the public data, they don't trust uh, uh, political organizations, they don't trust the government, uh, but they don't establish that relationship that for me, and, and probably for you, uh, it's evident uh, regarding uh, the transition of Latin America uh, from dictatorship to democracy in the 80s. Okay. Thank you very much, Victor. Uh, before we bring this to a close, I want to read a couple of comments that Daniel uh, Trielli made um, apropos this, this thread. He says, you know, to tap into that, newsrooms in Brazil were traditionally influenced by French journalism up until the mid 20th century, and then it became Americanized. Had there not been a political reason for that Americanization, we would see European style data journalism in Brazil as well. Um, we are at time, so I leave that as an open question. Uh, and I want to thank uh, Mariana uh, for great moderation, Victor for a spectacular uh, seminar, uh, a very lively and engaged audience uh, for, with lots of questions and interesting uh, contributions. And uh, I want to invite uh, everybody for the next uh, seminar of this quarter, the last one of this quarter actually, by Sylvia Weisford at George uh, Washington University next Thursday. Uh, we'll start actually two hours before our regular time, 10 a.m. Central Time. We'll communicate that uh, on social media. And I uh, wish everybody a great rest of your days and closing of the week. Bye now. Thank you.